Hi, I'm Eric, and I'm going to show you in this video three things in QGIS that will make your life a bit easier as an urban researcher. First of all, we're going to have a look at spatial bookmarks. The second is background maps. There's quite a few options for background maps. I'm going to show you a few. And third is we also have topographic maps um, from the last 150 years or so. We're going to add them to QGS. Uh, we, in order to do that, we need to use the Python console, um, but we'll just copy the code for now. And you can add your own later on. Let's get started. So let's first have a look at the um, uh, spatial bookmarks. Um, if you have this uh, study area, for example, you have the university area of, uh, of Delft, um, and say, okay, this is an interesting part, and this is my project area. You can make a spatial bookmark out of this. Um, you see you have here this tool called New Spatial Bookmark. Um, click this one or use Ctrl B and you have a new bookmark. I could call this TU, for example. If you want to use your bookmarks, uh, easiest way is to uh, show them through the browser panel. If you use uh, show special bookmarks here, you go to the browser panel. In here are also all your data connections and everything, but there's also the special bookmarks. As you can see, I prepared a few. So for example, if you want to go to uh, Delft City Center, um, I've got this one. If you're interested in the Geofort areas, this one or the whole of the Netherlands is here. And we just made this new one called TU and that brings you back to that TU area. So that's the use of spatial bookmarks. Another thing uh, I'd like to discuss today is backgrounds. There are uh, numerous background maps that you can use. Um, as you can see, I use the uh, open topo background layer, um, which I like. I, I think it is a neat map and it's got the right coloring, but it might not be the best one for your project. So there's a couple of ways to add different background layers to your uh, project. One of course is the PDOK uh, services plugin. Um, and for example, you could use um, aerial pictures. Uh, these are the, uh, the most recent ones, should be the same as this one. So if I add this to the map, you'll see we have aerial pictures for the whole of the Netherlands. Here you can also use, of course, the bookmarks to see how the area looks like on this um, photograph. Another one you could use, for example, if you want a map, but a Dutch map, but not a um, the open topo one, is what you could use is the uh, uh, base registration topographic map. Uh, you could use that in a gray, a pastel, different colors. The gray is interesting. Um, I kind of like this one because it is a really um, laid back uh, background. You can use a lot of extras on this one uh, without it getting too crowded. I think the only backdrop here is all the labels are in black. Um, but otherwise this is a very, uh, well let's say a quiet background map. In PDOK there's nice background maps but there's also other ways to get your background map. There's another plugin called the Quick Map Services. I've got it installed already, but if you're if you want to install it, you go to the plugin manager and you just start typing quick map uh, quick m and you see quick map services here. It's a collection of easy uh, to add base maps. Well, that's what it is. It has a, uh, a couple of buttons here, but also uh, it's under the web menu. And here it's easy to show which kind of uh, data we have. Out of the box this comes with not as much, but you could go to the settings and you have to uh, add the uh, more services. Uh, it gives you the, uh, the contributed pack as well. Uh, once you've done that, you've got all these um, all these map layers. So for example, you could uh, use the, um, uh, where's the open street map one? You could use the open street map uh, here as well. Now, as this is 
primary being used as a background map, it will put itself on the bottom of the uh, stack here. There's uh, there's others as well. For example, if you want to have uh, some uh, some Google uh, things, you can do that as well. Even the Google traffic is here. I could put uh, Google traffic on top of that, and you see you recognize it. I think it's got a five minute update frequency or so, so it's more or less live. Uh, another thing you can use here is uh, there's 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 quite a few options, um, but uh, Stamen's got this lovely watercolor. Um, might not be usable for everyone, but it is an interesting map. So if you're looking for different backgrounds, this might be it. Now another thing is that to to have a look at an old topographic map. And there's this uh, beautiful uh, website in the Netherlands called Topo Tijdreis. It's uh, run by the Dutch uh, cadaster. And you can zoom through the time here or uh, to the map. And if you look at, for example, now we're at 1937. If you zoom in, you see you get a different map. Um, and you see that Delft wasn't that large yet. So. Can we use this data in QGIS as well? Yes, we can. I mean, this is just interesting toy. Uh, but if you want to use it in your QGIS project, um, you can add all these layers as well. Here you need the Python console. Uh, you can program it for yourself, but there's a very nice blog post on uh, QGIS NL. Uh, the blog post is Topotijdreis in QGIS. Unfortunately, this one is only in Dutch. Um, but I'll show you the uh, the easy way, and that is here. There's a uh, uh, some uh, Python code. I could just uh, copy this code, and I'll go to back to QGIS. Then I uh, open the Python console. Um, if you don't have the uh, the editor, it's this button to show the editor. You copy your code in here. Uh, let's see, paste, and uh, then run the script, and that will give you the uh, all the topo titreis layers. Now these layers are uh, mutually exclusive, so that means that if I uh, open a recent one like the 2015, that's the most recent one, it will give you only the map for 2015, and all the other topo titreises will have turned itself off. Uh, 9031 is here, and of course here as well, if I zoom into an area, it will give you another map of that area, but with more detail. Here you also see that there is some uh, difference in coloring uh, for the different maps. Um, no worries about that, it's about the content in this case. So I've shown you here um, the uh, use of the uh, spatial bookmarks. So if you want to see Geoford area for this certain area, you see uh, for this period in time, you see that at this point in time there was no fort, which is basically not true. So this must be uh, not a military map, but a civil map in which the fortresses were hidden. If I look at an older one, it's probably there. Here you see it's empty. But it looks like a kind of a strange shaped um, area, but here you can clearly see there's a fort here. So it was there in 1900, we know it's in 2020 as well, so it must have been there all the time. But then we had to defend ourselves against the Russians, of course. Right, so uh, we have this uh, different... Um, uh, these different uh, topographic maps from different years. We have all kind of different background maps using uh, the Quick Map Services plugin or the PDOK plugin. Um, there's so much information. Go ahead, enjoy yourself, and do your research as you would like to do it.